This is my cat toy launcher day project that I built in one day out of parts I already had laying around, including a few things scavenged out of a non-functional printer. It is going to be programmed to randomly launch toys a couple times a day while I'm at work for my cat to chase around. Here's the general layout of this device. The base is as large a diameter as could fit on my 3D printer. The anvil inside it is mounted to a shaft connecting it to the motor with just 3D printed uh, bushings at either end. The motor is fixed to the top in such a way that it can be disassembled. Um, only this outer part is glued down. The ramp over here is a 45 degree angle to maximize the horizontal travel of the projectile, which is the 1.5 inch diameter ball. There is a tube and a stepper motor which holds the ball in place and then pushes it down to be dropped when the Arduino tells it to and the extension tube is what holds the extra balls stacked on top. Here's the design of the part I'm referring to as the anvil. A couple of notes about it. It has the center of mass exactly in its center of rotation. That keeps vibration and reaction forces down. It is set up geometry wise such that it strikes the ball exactly normal to the direction of the ramp so that all of the momentum is transferred only in the direction in line parallel with the ramp. Over on the other side, the mass weighted part of it clears the ball on the back swing and there's a chamfer just to uh, kind of glance it off of the edge if it's a little misaligned and hits the wall. I've hidden some of the components so that I can show you the motion a little more clearly. So the challenge with this project is that I have no precise position control over the DC motor and no way for the Arduino to actually tell where it is on its travel. So initially I'd thought about just spinning the motor up to full speed and then dropping the ball down as it's spinning. The problem is the anvil is going to spin really quickly compared to how fast the ball is dropping, which is only due to gravity. So more often than not, it'll strike the ball before it's reached the bottom, and that'll kind of cause it to jam up right there. So to avoid that happening, I'm going to drop the ball first and then accelerate the hammer to swing around and hit it. And I know I can accelerate this pretty quickly from some testing I did. Then of course the problem with that is I don't know where along the travel it is. And in order to avoid jamming, because there's a possibility of the hammer just happening to be, say, right here, and the ball landing there and then causing a jam when it tries to go forward. So I'm going to code it to go backwards just for a set amount of time, maybe a few milliseconds, and then hit the full swing forward. That way, in this case, if the ball is sort of on top of it, partially, it'll reverse, drop, and then hit with the full swing. That also gives me a little bit of variability, a little bit of randomness. Sometimes it might be a little bit of a shorter toss. Sometimes, if it happens to start over here, it'll be a really hard hit. Um, but even if it's not terribly far away, it does accelerate quickly enough to get a pretty hard hit. This mechanism allows me to control when the ball falls without letting more than one through at once, even if there's a whole bunch stacked up in the extension tube. So basically this will rotate with the stepper motor and it'll push one ball along and then by the time the next one is able to drop, the next arm along is preventing that from going forward. So only one can fall at a time and then the next one is in place for the next rotation. Here's what the main body of the launcher looks like after I've printed the main parts. It took a couple of uh, reprints and clearance tweaks to get it to spin more or less freely. Uh, but here's what it looks like. I'll show you in more detail on the CAD model. Can I get a moment of silence? for Radio Shack. All 
I don't know if somebody at the factory got a little carried away with their trigonometry or what, but these pins do not match the standard spacing of a breadboard, so I'm having to solder this guy a little bit diagonally. This will output 36 volts at around 0.9 amps. AC-DC converter, that's close enough. White stripe is negative. These blue and red wires are soldered to the two wires off of the AC-DC converter coming from the wall, which gives me 36 volts. And then I've got two DC-DC converters in parallel with that one set up to give me around four or five volts and that's for the logic on the microcontroller and the other set to give me around 20 and 24 or so volts for the motors and i can adjust that voltage with the potentiometers on the dc dc converters to get it exactly dialed into what i want Here's a little overview of my circuit before I've added any of the motors. This is the source voltage coming from the AC-DC converter. That is going in parallel to the two inputs of my DC-DC converters. This one is the high voltage 24 volts for the motors. That goes straight over to the motor input on the shield. And then this one, the low voltage 5 volts, that powers the logic that goes to the voltage in and the ground on the Arduino Teensy and those same uh, VN and ground go to the VN and ground on the shield and then the rest of these wires here are just to adapt the Teensy to this shield that's meant for an Arduino Uno. Slight change of plans here so as I started dabbling in the programming of my Teensy and this is a Teensy LC, I realized that the library for this shield, and that's the title of it there, uh, it's not compatible with this microcontroller because it's from like 2009 or something really old. Uh, so instead, I'm actually just gonna pull these chips off of the shield and wire them separately on their own. I don't really need the full functionality of this shield for this application, and that's really the simplest fix these are L293D chips, basically a couple of H bridges internal that'll uh, let me control a DC motor on one and a stepper motor on the other. Let's see if I can get these off without destroying them. So I've updated my wiring a little bit. The two DC DC converters are still wired in the same way. I just moved one over to make room for the chips. The only difference is now they have a common ground going between them. The chips themselves, I'll put up on the screen a little pinout diagram for them. Uh, but basically, this orange wire is the high voltage motor supply. This yellow wire is the low voltage logic supply. Got a ground there. And these three are the inputs from the controller. Uh, one of them is enable, which is the top corner. The other two are input one and two. And then the motor outputs, these are outputs one and two to the motor. Quick test program I threw together for the motor. It's basically just cycling the inputs one and two between one zero, zero one, zero zero, and one one. I'll put up a little logic chart to show what all that does, uh, but basically that lets me uh, control which direction the motor is going or disable it. You can see it jumping around every time it starts and stops. This is the stepper motor I'm using, which I pulled out of a printer, the same printer I took the DC motor from. It's a bipolar stepper motor, and the way I'm gonna tell which pairs of wires go together is just by looking for continuity between them. So, hear the beep. The 
black and yellow are one pair, the brown and orange are another pair. All right, I've got the second chip wired up for the stepper motor. I know it looks a lot more complicated, but it really isn't. This yellow wire is the low voltage in for the logic. This orange wire is the high voltage in parallel with the other one, power for the motor itself. I have five wires coming from the Arduino to the chip. That's the enable pin and then inputs one, two, three, and four. And I'll put a pin out of this chip up on the screen so you can tell what's plugged in where. And then lastly, ground is this blue wire. Everything's got a common ground. And then the outputs for the motor, I've got outputs one and two going to one pair for this bipolar stepper motor. That's the yellow and black. And then I've got outputs three and four going to the other pair. That's the orange and brown. And I've got a little test program running that just steps it 100 times one direction, pauses, then 100 times the other direction. So that is how I'll be controlling my stepper motor. Here's another test program running to demonstrate controlling both motors simultaneously. Um, it kind of just does a few random different things in no particular order, including changing the direction and pausing both motors. And I'll probably walk you through how this test code works real quick just to give you a basic idea of how to control these motors with these types of chips. Quick rundown of this test code. I'm using the Arduino stepper motor library. Up here, this block of code just declares which pins on the Arduino go to which pins on my two L293D chips. This variable step angle is just a property of the stepper motor I'm using, and this calculates how many steps per revolution. That sets up the four input pins for my stepper motor. Stepper motor is using four inputs and an enable. DC is using two inputs and an enable. Uh, down here, I just turn on the board LED to show me that the program is running. I set up everything as an output from the Arduino. This enables both motors, sets the speed for the stepper motor to 15 RPM, and then a few kind of random commands, just pause once per loop. This one turns on the DC motor in one direction. This turns it on in the opposite direction. This disables the DC motor and the stepper motor will just go that many steps when you use that command and negative makes it go in the other direction. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now that I've tested everything, I'm gonna be taking that exact same circuit and transferring it onto one of these prototyping boards to make the connections more permanent and reliable by soldering them to these through holes. I've just finished soldering up this board and I've done a little bit of a better job with color coding this time. All the green wires are signals from the Arduino to either of the chips. This lower one on the bottom is for the stepper motor. Upper one is for the DC motor. All the purple wires are output signals to the motors. Yellow low voltage for logic, orange high voltage for motor supply. Blue is all the grounds and those are all common connected to each other. And then red is my main input and black is my main negative input. If you've never seen one of these types of prototyping boards before, the way I like to deal with these is to just have one pin coming straight through and then the one I want to connect to it, put it through, bend it over, and then solder it onto the first one. And then some connections I have like four things going to, for example, uh, but nothing too crazy going on here. 
I kept female breadboard ends on the main outputs and inputs just so that I could easily disconnect the things that I'm likely to want to. Nothing at all has changed about that test program I showed earlier. I'm just running it again to confirm everything in my wiring is still working. And it is, so that's a relief. First test with only the DC motor running. I've got the code set to kind of ramp it up and then ramp it down with PWM. Here's what it looks like after the final assembly. Got the PCB mounted vertically and added a strain relief. Most of these 3D printed parts are just glued together. All right, these will be the first ever test launches. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out given that I built it in a day out of things I had laying around, but a couple of ways I could improve it. First of all, these balls are just not ideal for being launched. It's uh, far from an elastic collision and they're not even all that spherical and uh, they don't really slide that well through here. Um, also, I definitely, if I were to start this over, I would have used some type of real bearings on the main motor. Um, it does wobble quite a bit still, and it was difficult to get everything aligned. And I probably would have used a different Arduino that worked with the shield I already had instead of just taking chips off it and rewiring everything. Um, but overall, pretty good. These are pretty squishy, and their center of mass is obviously kind of imperfect for this application. If I were to choose one specifically for this, uh, I'd probably pick something a little harder and more spherical and probably a little bit of a smaller diameter too.